Hello everyone. Thank you for joining the session. My name is Harsh Bhardwaj and I'm working as the business development engineer with Keysight Technologies. In today's session, we are going to discuss about overcoming high speed memory challenges such as HBMs, high bandwidth memories, graphics DDRs, LP DDRs and the different type of DDRs that are available in the market. Also, I'm going to take you through how accurate simulation and validation strategies can help you build a robust memory interface. Let's get started. Let us quickly see the table of content. First of all, we are going to talk about the typical memory applications like LPDDRs as well as the high bandwidth memories. Then we are going to check what a signal integrity engineer has to analyze when it comes to DDR as well as the high bandwidth memories. Then we are going to do some sort of design exploration and I'm going to take you through the whole product development cycle. And after that, we are going to see the simulation and measurement workflows for signal integrity. And there will be an accurate comparison between the results that we have got from our simulation tools with the measurement instruments. Then at last, I'm going to take you through the signal integrity simulation workflow and the design challenges. Along with that, we are going to see the solutions using Keysight ADS memory designer tool. Let us discuss about a typical memory application. Today's computing and AI applications demand, demand enormous bandwidth. We rely on technologies such as DDRs, graphics DDRs, LP DDRs, and HBMs. And each of these are optimized for different needs, starting from uh, general computing to high performance mobile as well as ultra high speed AI systems. Understanding these memory types is critical before diving into the design and analysis. Now let us see there are two, uh, it has been di divided into two major categories. First is the DDRs, DDR stands for double data rate SDRAMs and then comes the HBMs. HBM stands for high bandwidth memories. On the basis of typical applications, DDR double data rate memories are divided into three major categories. First is the general purpose DDRs. Second comes the GDDRs known as graphics DDRs and then comes LPDDRs known as low power double data rate memories. So general purpose DDRs are majorly used in desktops, laptops and servers for general computing applications. Then comes the graphics DDRs. They are majorly found in GPUs, gaming consoles and high performance computing that requires fast graphic processing. LPDDRs are majorly used in smartphones, tablets and ultra thin laptops and they are very power efficient and it comes to performance. So the memories that are being used when it comes to AI based accelerators, then we talk about HBMs. HBM stands for high bandwidth memories. HBMs are created by, uh, by stacking multiple DRAMs on top of each other and each of them will be connected using the TSVs. TSV stands for through silicon VRs. And HBMs are majorly utilized in AI, artificial intelligence, high performance computings and GPUs for ultra high speed data processing with low power consumptions. Next, let us see the comparison between all these type of DDRs as well as the HBMs mentioned above. Now let us quickly dis understand about what to analyze being a signal integrity engineer. When working with high speed memories, both time domain as well as frequency domain analysis are critical. We focus on insertion loss, return loss, crosstalk, jitter, intersymbol interference, delays, skews and many more things. Extracting S parameter and running a channel simulations at early stage, early design stage helps us prevent surprises at the system level. As you can see in the diagram on the left, we have performed an S parameter extraction to get the values of insertion loss and return loss. And we can analyze the crosstalk between two parallelly, uh, parallelly traveling traces. And this all is possible by performing the S parameter extraction. Then comes the time domain. In time domain, we are going to analyze our I diagram. And in the I diagram, we usually look for jitter, intersymbol interference, 
undershoot, overshoot, delay, and data skew. And how we are going to see this eye diagram? By performing the channel simulation. We call it as end-to-end -end channel simulation that has your transmitter, your channel, or your interconnect, and your receiver intact. Now let us discuss about the design process that integrates all the design exploration part. So the first and foremost, you need to create a virtual design prototype and that virtual design prototype need to be simulated and validated. Once your validation is completed, your Gerber is released, your board is ready and you have done all your validation, then the board goes for the fabrication and we get the prototypes in return. Now what happens once we get the prototype with us, then we do some sort of measurements and verify the performance of the board. And what will happen? For example, if you are while performing these kind of me measurements, you're seeing a closed eye. Closed eye gives you, uh, gives you the idea about your timing as well as your voltage level and losses. So what you are going to do? So first of all, you need to search for the possible root cause. And once you find the possible root cause, all you need to do is you just need to go to their design phase, run the simulation and validate it. And if that thing is not working properly, even though after you have taken care of your crosstalk uh, reflection and all the other parts and still it is not happening, then what you need to do is you use techniques such as equalization either at the transmitter or at the receiver end. And once the simulation and validation has been performed and your root cause is been omitted, then after that we fabricate the prototype too, and then we do the and when and then we perform and measure the measurement and verify the performance, and we get an open eye at the end. Now let us see the simulation workflow for signal integrity engineer. If you are a signal integrity engineer and have you have received a board file or a board. For example, this is the board on which I want to run a signal integrity analysis or a signal integrity simulation. What, what should I do? So these are the steps that need to be followed. First, you need to verify the stack up. Check the stack up if each and every details with respect to stack up is correct, like the dielectric constant values and dielectric height values and uh, the other values related to the stack up. Then comes the extraction of channel EM model. When I say extraction of channel EM model, we usually perform the S parameter extraction using the 3D EM tools. And using that X parameter extraction, we check the value of insertion loss, return loss, time domain reflectometry. Then comes the next part that is dissect your channel data. When I say dissect your channel data, I usually talk about uh, checking each and every aspect of the channel, whether it's at the transmitter, whether it's at the interconnect level or whether it's at the receiver level. And once you run end to end channel simulation, all you need to do is explore the design space. When the, the main meaning behind explore the design phase is once your simulation is done, your eye diagram is closed, then you need to explore in your design and make changes in your design in such a way so that your closed eye will be open at the point of time. Let us see the design challenges and solutions. As, this, as the memory speed increases, the issues such as jitter, inter-symbol interference, and crosstalk become very significant. As you can see in the example that I have taken, this example contains LPDDR5 that is running on a speed grade of 6400 Mbps with 15 picosecond of RJ that is random jitter and my eye is pretty much closed. As you can see here, the eye mask has been violated. Now what we need to do, ultimately what we require is an open eye. So in order to, in this particular example, in order to open my eye, I have used something known as DFE equalization. DFE stands for decision feedback equalization in which I have used one tap of DFE equalization with jitter tracking and this is what my eye diagram looks like which is pretty much big eye as compared to my transmitter end or the option given above so this example usually talks about how confidently you can predict the margin of your mask so this is the formula that you can use where you have you, you need to have a single-ended ibis ami models with forward clocking and then that has been added with the DDR bus simulation. You need to perform the DDR bus simulation and then accurate EM modeling of the PCB. And 
with these three parts you can get a confident on prediction of margin at for, uh, for your eye diagram mask now let us quickly discuss about the complex challenges that a signal integrity engineer faces when they perform signal integrity analysis on a ddr or on a memory based interface in traditional memory design workflows setting up simulation takes a significant amount of time even before the first analysis has been done any changes in the topology and configuration demands multiple schematic updates and parameter tuning that even make, makes the process inconvenient as the design margins are shrinking and speeds are increasing the risk of error rises dramatically collecting analyzing and improving simulation results become harder slowing down the development of the board troubleshooting issues post uh, post fabrication is not only challenging but can severely delay the projects as well as respins can occur ultimately product reliability becomes uncertain leading to major design risk that can impact time to market and product quality So if you are someone who is a signal integrity engineer and performs simulations based on uh, memory designs so in this case I would like to introduce you to Keysight ADS memory designer Keysight ADS memory designer streamlines the memory interface designs by reducing setup time from hours to minutes it enables a single schematic for both transient and the DDR bus simulations, support automatic IBIS model applications, and simplifies EM modeling with the SI Pro DDR wizard. It also ensures fast, more accurate pre layout and post layout analysis, boosting productivity and design confidence. As you can see on the left side, this is the old method or the old way to perform the DDR based simulations where you need to manually add and put all the wirings between your memory designer or memory controller and your different type of memories. This significantly requires a lot of human effort as well as if there is an error during the simulation or if there is an error during the simulation setup at that time you are, go you are going to run multiple iterations for the same simulations and it is going to be a hefty task for you. So to overcome this challenge, we have a new way where we have been using a smart bus wiring that can help you to perform your post as well as pre layout analysis when it comes to all kind of memories. In this tool, all you need is you need to put the memory controllers IBIS AMI model then comes for all your DDR RAMs, you need to put the AMI models or the IBIS AMI models, and then you need to add your pre layout or post layout PCB stack, and it is going to get connected using the smart bus wiring. And even though if you have some sort of terminations, you can mention these terminations over here, and all you need to do is just run the simulation. So the simulation tool will take care of all your all your connections as you can see over here these are known as smart bus wire connections where it drastically reduce the human effort as well as the intent of human error in the next part of this webinar i am going to take and i am going to show you a simulation based on keysight ads memory designer where i'll be using a memory controller and a ddr and i'm going to run a whole end-to-end -end channel simulations and will show you how the eye diagram analysis has been done within 10 to 15 steps. It is a very robust as well as easy go approach. I would like to thank all of you for attending this session. In the second part of this video, I am going to discuss about how do we perform simulations using Keysight ADS memory designer. In that video, I am going to take an example of a LPDDR and will perform end to end channel simulation and will show you how easy and convenient the tool is and how easily you can perform end to end channel simulations. Stay tuned. Thank you and have a nice day.